everybody. Welcome to another episode of Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network. I'm Gayanne Bruno. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, and please like our Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast. We also have a YouTube channel, Between the Sheets with Gayanne Bruno. I know we're off a week, um, and probably you're all very confused, but last Friday I had to cancel. I've been doing my show off and on since 2009, and I never cancel. The show must go on, but um, my cat had kidney failure, so I was otherwise preoccupied and didn't really feel like I could do a good show or um, give you guys a proper show since I just was not focused. So I asked the ladies, um, I know it's an off week, but who can come by tonight? We're also going to do an hour show only this evening, and then next week we'll be on again. So just in case the confusion, we'll go back to the first and third Friday of every month. Please depending on the cats, of course. Depending on the cats. Yes. Um, good news, Willie. Um, I took him today. He's, you know, got chronic kidney disease and he's an older cat. But, um, you know, I asked the vet straight out and I trust this vet, Media City Animal Hospital, Dr. Liz. And um, she's known me for 20 years. And I asked her, you know, is it time? And she said, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. It's his first bout. So, you know, please prayers. Thank you for all your prayers and good wishes and good vibes over Facebook and Instagram for Willie. Um, you know, the power of positive thinking does work. So keep him going because he's not out of the woods yet. But I do so appreciate all of you. Um, I was really down there. I never disconnect. I, I usually talk things out. And um, I guess one day I just turned off my phones and turned off everything, which I have not done in forever. And I just needed to sort of just stop. And um, so all of you who called me that I didn't get back to you, I have a list, I promise um, <laughs> that I will call you all back. But I just want to say thank you because sometimes, you know, and I've got a lot of friends and I've got a lot of friends that I call family and, and you know, just the outpour of when you're feeling like shit and depressed, um, it just makes you have hope. So thank you all. Um, so further ado, that's the Willie update. Um, I want to say the ladies that I have in the house tonight, um, oh, Cheryl, she's also having some cat issues. She was going to be here. Um, so prayers and best wishes and positive vibes go out to Cheryl and her baby. Mara was going to be here tonight, but she got a first COVID shot yesterday. So she's doing better, just a little under the weather. They say the young ones, they get symptoms more and she's a young one. Um, let's see who else. Hmm. Kim was going to come tonight, but it's her daughter's birthday. So family comes first. And, but nonetheless, I have an amazing bunch of women here tonight. You know, some of them, some of them are repeat offenders. And then Ronnie, who she'll give her own spiel because I'm brain dead. Um, um, we'll get to Ronnie. Ronnie is a guest and hopefully she'll be a rotating co-host with us in the future. So let's start with um, the queen of England, at least uh, my version of England, Cara Noble. How have you been, my love? What well, have you my love, I also have a crotchety old cat that wanders around my house. He's 18 now. But I think he might have cat's burgers because... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Well, it's cat's ass burgers. <laughs> it's ass burgers, but from a cat's point of view. He's, he's gone quite loopy. He does tend to crap in strange corners. Yeah, uh, so we love our cats and we have to love them through, through the end. <laughs> through the end, we are there. Um, I'm talking and then, the Queen of England, Meghan Markle, but I, you know, I'd talk about it, but... We might want to think about discussing that. Mm. I will say that it depends on what's discussed. I will either participate or not participate. I will allow you ladies to go on. And then when it's gone on way too fucking long, I'll move on. But I will not be able to participate in that conversation should you all bring it up. Um, it is that. free speech. This is a forum. There is a place. I just cannot um, comment on any of it uh, due to my employment. Not that they said I can't but uh -huh. I prefer not to. I prefer to remain extremely neutral because I have a uh, tie into the show. So feel free, but I will step away. Um, but we do take callers, 323-524-2599. I'll just be the referee at that point. Um, back is Durga McBroom, who, uh, how are you, my love? What's going on with you? I have lost nine pounds in the last month. Uh, I have been exercising i've been walking between two miles and 4.5 miles uh three four times a week i did one and a half today because i had to get back for the show uh i yeah, been... i can see it in your face yeah, me too. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, getting, I'm drinking a liter it's you know three and a half liters a day of water that's you're making not, you're not swooshing walking around 
Yeah. <laughs> no, and I feel really good. And in fact, I got my COVID, um, my first COVID shot the other day. And unlike a lot of my friends who felt really crappy for several days, mm-hmm. my arm hurt for about 12 hours. I put a hot compress and uh, kept drinking my water. And by the next morning, I was fine. Mm. So drink your water. Uh, and speaking of cats, I'm going to be fostering a cat starting next week, a little four month old kitten. So that's oh. going to be. <laughs> Yeah. So okay. I'm like, I'm like, so like ADD right now. Um, <laughs> but you said, have you ever fostered a kitten before? I've had cats all my life. And in fact, it's only the last few years that I haven't had one. The last cat I had was when I lived in Big Sur and my husband accidentally left the door open a crack one night and he got out and oh. didn't come back. Oh. Uh, yeah, he got eaten by a bigger cat because that's usually oh, what he's there. Because there's lions and bobcats up there, and it just broke my heart so bad. I sobbed for days, and I haven't had a, an animal since then. But I think I'm ready now. Aw, and you got rid of the husband, so that's a good thing. No, I didn't. He died. He had him put down. No, no, no. He he passed no, he away. Died. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I did know that. I'm sorry to make yeah. a joke. That's okay. I did know that, but yeah, I don't know why or how. <laughs> Well, does that really matter? It's kind of personal. No, no, I just realized I should have asked you. Well, yeah. first of all, let me just explain one thing about Cara. She's she's a reporter as well, and you know how they are. Yeah. <laughs> they want to know every fact, every everything. So fact, um, he, he died of end stage liver disease. Oh, That's how. I'm so and sorry. I him and it was really intense. So and a long, a long, slow passing. It wasn't that long, actually. Uh, no, it, it really wasn't that long. But you know what? It's um, that disease and a lot of other diseases. Some of them are so debilitating. You know, some of them take long, and you you actually sometimes, no matter how much the loss is, sometimes you sit there and you go, "Thank God, it didn't take long." So you know, yeah. yeah. You know, and I, you know, it's like I've never met him. I've known him during for years. I never met your husband, but you know, he was a you know, from what you said, you know, as long as you you know, he made you happy and you were happy there, then he was good enough for me. So that's sweet. He was a crazy son of a bitch. We all know it. The night we met, you and I, <laughs> don't you remember? He was calling me like 20 times because he was jealous. Because yes. I was doing Martha. And yep. he was like, what are you doing? And I just had to turn my phone off. Yeah, no, no, we were sitting. I remember I had my, that's when I had my office in my house before my mother moved in. I was sitting on the floor in my girl cave and we were trying to have a conversation. And she's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, that was, no, we met at, um, well, we met at the Martha that, thing. Yeah. That was first. But then following that, oh, we were talking good. and it was like, oh my God, tell him I don't want to fuck you. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'm good. That we's got, we're good. I don't, I, I don't, just because I'm a lesbian doesn't mean I want to sleep with every woman, not every <laughs> single woman. Um, but, and then now we move to, Joining us yet again, Vicki Wagner, comedian, author, whatever. She's amazing. Vicki Wagner. Again, first of all, let me tell you, I'm sorry to hear about Willie, and I've been sending good love for him, and I know exactly how you feel, because I had two cats that got up there in age, and my one cat lived to be 21, boo-boo, boo-boo and my other cat lived to be 18, so I totally understand that. And Durga, mm-hmm. here's to Mark, since we mentioned him, and I'm glad I did get a chance to meet Mark. He was a fabulous, extremely handsome, super sweet man, and mm-hmm. hopefully that didn't bring any sad moments up for you, but Mark was a total oh, okay. guy. And he so, loved you. He thought you were hilarious. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm glad, and I'm glad you guys came to a couple comedy shows at the comedy store to see me. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, what I've been up to, Durga and I actually talked this week, and we didn't even know it, but we were both, you know, trying to lose weight, and I lost nine pounds as well, too. I'm not doing it. Thank you. Because I've got to, I mean, I gained 10 pounds since October, since all the Halloween candy and mm-hmm. all the Christmas candy, and then I was making those chocolate-covered strawberries for Valentine's Day. <laughs> I swear to God, I ate so many of them, and then all of a sudden, I'm 10 pounds heavier, and I'm like, what the hell? I already had to lose weight. But Gayanne, I want to tell you, the first uh, time that I came back on the show a few months ago, and I think you said you lost 30 pounds, yeah. I was so inspired by you. I was yeah. like, Gayanne looks effing great. Like, you know, you and I have known each other 20 years, I think. And uh, you look so good that I was like, I got to do something too. All these people I know are losing weight, looking great. I can't be gaining 10 pounds of chocolate covered strawberries. Come on. You know what? I mean, here's the thing about, you know, weight, you know, I, I don't judge people. I don't. If they're happy, it's not about the outside. 
for me, um, and I'll segue into Ronnie in a second with this, you know, for me, I didn't choose to lose weight. I just did because I started working from home and I was eating healthier and, 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 and doing like the proper thing. And, but for me, losing weight isn't about the physicality. It's about as we get older, you know, our bodies start to, no matter what we do, no matter what we put in, no matter what exercise, just in general, our bodies start to, I was gonna say degenerate, but I guess that's a word, degenerate. And, and naturally, because that's the cycle. So, you know, if someone's overweight, you know, you're only contributing to any causes that you don't really need to suffer from as you get older, as the body is sort of declining or getting, you know, whatever. So to me, you know, I've lost 32 pounds and I've just, I mean, I've lost another five, you, you know, good. but I'm still oh not skinny. You know, I'm still not skinny. I mean, a friend of mine says you're anorexic. No, and you look good right now. Oh, you, look good. Yeah. you don't look too you skinny. Look healthy. You look just right. And I say, you know, I mean, when I was younger and I do not, I never had a, an issue. I was like, not that anorexia is, is it's not funny. It is not funny. It is a disease. Just like bulimia is a disease. Um, and, you know, and I'm thinking, well, I, 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 I never wanted to, because I think you have an issue, you know, because you're losing so much weight. I'm like, but I, because I think you may have an issue. You have a buddy. And I said, look, I'm going to tell you something. I was heavy. I was, I was a size 16. Okay. I've been that I've been there. Wow. And, mm -hmm. and I look, like how tall are you again? Five, one. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, so I used to be that heavy and, you know, and, you know, and I've been, I was lucky, even that heavy, I don't have any major health issues, but as I'm getting older, you know, and I see that my mom is on dialysis and she's, see, you know, she has these things and my father died from something, some heart related issue. I mean, you know, I'm looking at my history going, you know, I don't want this to be me. Right. I mean, it may end up being me, but at least if I'm thinner and I'm this and I'm this and I'm this and I'm taking care of myself, maybe it won't affect me as badly as it did, you know, my parents. Right. You know, well, you know, I'm a diabetic, so I have to get it under control and lose weight. Cause as you know, your mom's on dialysis and I don't want to go that route. Right. Because usually, and, and a lot of people like they, they still don't know why my mother is on dialysis. No idea. Okay. Um, but you know, but you know, a lot of people in the dialysis center are diabetics. Right. And I had no idea the correlation between kidney disease and diabetes. Yep. So that was eye opening. But you know, again, I just say, you know, people, you know, it's not about you know, like that I'm superficial or I, 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 I like, you know, fat shame people. I'm not, I mean, I have friends from everything, but you know, just for your own well being and your own health, health, you know, just, just well, honestly, together. for me, I, I want to lose weight because I'm going to be, you know, I had my 50th birthday this past year and it was my COVID birthday. So I didn't get to do shit. Of course, no. you know, I took, I took Kim to China for her 50th birthday. So my mom has a trip planned for us to go to um, Ireland and Scotland. And I'm like, oh, you're going to love I, it. I know. I've never been there. I'm 79% Irish. And my thought was, I do not want to sit in that little tiny plane seat for nine hours. I've got to <laughs> lose at least 30, 40 pounds before I go. Fuck that. Because I don't want to be squished in there. And, you know, you always get sat next to some big fat person or something. I do at least. <laughs> I'm so happy when I see a little skinny person come sit next to me. As a matter of fact, the last time I saw, I was on the plane by myself, so I was a little skinny, it was an Asian lady. I said, oh, would you like to sit here? <laughs> I put her <laughs> Does it get two more room? I was so happy she sat next to me because I had a guy I sat next to one time, I swear he's like Jabba the Hutt. His fat was like leaning all up against me. It was oh, like a giant hot oh. pillow against me the whole the whole plane ride. Well, before we move on, because I want to continue with this conversation, I just love what it's just the girls. Um, I want to introduce Ronnie, um, uh, Ronnie Loiza. Um, yes. Only because I under, wrote it. Under, under, understudy tonight. I counted right. three. So. <laughs> so the thing is, is talking about health. Ronnie, um, Ronnie put together a series of women. Um, of like an empowerment series and I'll have her go in it and she, she talk about it and she approached me um, 
it, I'll tell, Ronnie can tell you how we met, which we never really met in person, but she can take that story. But we are going to this spring. But we will, yes. Um, and she approached me to be, you know, one of the, the talkers, you know, that to interview on her, on her show or, you know, on her series. It was fitness is your best asset. And it was all these people into nutrition, diet, um, everything that had to do with health and fitness, but mostly about the mindset because it was the pandemic. And all of a sudden there were these barriers and, and problems and, and people didn't want to work out at home. Gayanne, and I mean this as a compliment, was my one un fitness person and it was great because so many people related to her she was just like like she said i used to sit back and just eat and i still had muscle but then she started just eating more or less clean and started walking and she's living a real life it wasn't like she was a gym rat or she hates the gym and she said so on my on my interview i hate the gym i'm not going to the gym and i loved it it's like yeah because this is a real woman some women will work out at the gym. Some women will work out at home. She was the one that was saying, I ain't going to work out. <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> Period. And I just don't do it. It's, 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 it's like uh, Italians don't do that. Yeah, um, so what so how do you take about? care of yourself? So that's what we had to my, talk about. <laughs> my so, Italian trainer is so freaking hot. I, that's the motivation to go to the gym. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, that's, but, I, I, but I've never liked it. I, I mean, I have ADHD, okay? Me and too. I'm not on medication because I can't, it, it just doesn't, it, it, it just is so counterproductive for my job and the way I have to sort of, you know, think on the fly. It just handicaps me. I need to sort of be ADHD. So, um, so, you know, I, I, I've tried, trust me, I've spent a lot of money on gym memberships, trying to be motivated, went. went a few times, got the cute trainers, mostly women, um, you know, that, that motive, that, that second motivation, you know? whether they were gay or not. And I just found myself like on a bike or on a this or on a that, even with classes getting bored off my ass. Oh, listen to the earphones. You know, I, this is my music. I don't want to hear it. You know, I, I, I'd rather be dancing. So it's not who I am, but I'm not going to lie and say, oh yeah, I lost weight and I go to the gym. I'm just blessed. I have really good muscle, not under here. This sucks. But on top, from the top up, I've got really good muscle tone and I always have. So, you know, how I met Ron- I look good from the top up too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I look okay from the bottom down, but not the best. I, I'm, I'm good from the waist up. And then they stop right here anyway, so I'm good. Um, but Ronnie, I met, cause out of the blue, you, did you Facebook messenger no, me? I DM'd you cause I loved your posts and I didn't know her, but I felt like I know, you know, in social media, I'm like, you don't know these people, but you kind of do. And I said, I want your opinion. And I wanted and her opinion on a title and tag for my summit. And she's like, call me. And so we talked all of a sudden. She was like, mixes water, best friend. And, because uh -huh. she's like that. She's giving, if she has a little time, she's giving. And, uh, and so I held this series and it was just all motivational plus health tips, plus, plus nutrition. But the oh. reason I held it is because I'm a personal trainer. And I had all these women starting to talk to me at the end of their sessions. And we were all of a sudden Zooming. We were Zoom training. And they had friends and family and relatives, all women who were just glued to that Zoom working. And I think because at the beginning of this, remember, a lot of jobs were being, you know, and so mm -hmm. they didn't want to be indispensable. So they had no barriers. They were always working. And they were always answering emails. And all of a sudden the kids were working at home and the husband was working at home or the partner was at home. Everybody was working on the dining room table and it was just a mess. And people weren't taking care of themselves. I'm 55, almost 56. The reason I became a trainer is because of my health. Because I think strong is sexy. And like today I went from, from my one shot um, of proleas for osteopenia because I tend, it's just genetics. I eat well, I do strength training and I got into strength training because of my bone density. And I took off my shirt to show her my, my arm. And she's like, do you work, work out a lot? And I just started laughing. I'm like, I'm a fitness coach. And no, I'm not a gym rat. And I don't overwork out. I work out every day. It's consistency. Right. And I work out for my health. Because I don't want to get up in the morning and hurt. I just don't want to hurt. And mm -hmm. I don't want to fall and break a hip. And well, my I new favorite morning word instead of good morning as I get up out of bed sometimes is oi. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of oi, wait, see if you can see this. Can oh, you see there we this? go. That's yeah. my trainer. Oh my oh, goodness. What? Hot. Wow. And I, if I, I, him. <laughs> I mean, I even find him hot. He is hot. <laughs> and if, 
Yeah, he'd be good let's, for squat thrusts. He, yeah, well, he he was. Let's say that for sure. But he's got to go right now. now, wherever you guys are. At first, I felt like I was coming out of a cave after nine months, or like out of post-war. Like, are, is it safe to go out? Now I'm starting to go up. It's like a lot of people are telling me they don't want to go back to the gym. It's kind of dirty with the hand sanitizers anyway, right. and they're they're good at home. They bought their pelotons and they bought their weights. And but same thing is like, are you guys starting to go out out? Not that I was ever paranoid, but I stayed mm-hmm. in for the most part. But now yeah. it's like, what all I do is walk. I, that's all I've been doing is trying to do my 10,000 steps a day, you know, and stay right around you there. You need to strength and- train if you have diabetes. I just got to tell you, because that's going to boost your metabolism. No, you I know. And my muscle. doctor did tell me that too. And I'm just, I've got to get on the bandwagon. But I, you know, a little bit. this far and I decided as of Monday that that's what I was going to start. There you I don't even know what real life. You know what? Just working out. Is everybody starting to go out again because they've had their yeah. first shot or second shot? I had my shot last week, but I won't get my second shot until um, April 8th. So I have to wait two weeks since, you know, oh. after that. I've been to, I've had my second shot and I've got one more week. Um, so, you know. Uh, How are you feeling, Gay? Do you feel confident, you know, to be around everybody now or what? You know what? I, 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 the answer is, let me explain uh, my opinion. You know, just because you get the shots or the double shot. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're immune. And That's I right. think that is an issue that I'm having with people. They think that the, the shot will make you immune. As a matter of fact, I heard that because of the new strains, we will be getting a booster shot. Right. So yeah. you're not immune. You know, you still have to wear the mask. You still have to do what you do because you can still get it. Right. It's only if you you can still be around a bunch of people that have it and still get it. What this is supposedly supposed to do is you lessen. can get it, but it's lessening, lessen the effects kind of much like the flu shot or the pneumonia shot. It's not, it's preventative, but it's not immune. You're not immune. But you know what I've been doing is I went, I've been to two dinners. Well, one was a lunch and one was a dinner where all of us, went and got tested beforehand and we all tested negative. Uh, and I know in the case of the first people that I went to, it was Lily Hayden the oh, yeah. wife, and her husband. And they like test all the time. I found this great place on Cahuenga, uh between Franklin and Hollywood. And it's 30 minutes. You go in, it's 50 bucks. They swab you and they text you the results within 30 minutes, wow. 15 minutes. And and then I went and saw one of my old childhood friends. Her mother uh, is um, um, uh, an actress, Joan Hotchkiss, who used to be on uh, The Odd Couple. She was uh, Oscar's girlfriend, and she was on several other things, but I hadn't seen her since I was a little girl. She's been fully vaccinated, but I made sure that I got tested before I went around her, and I tested negative. And before I was waiting for my test results, as I was in there, we all had our masks on. And as soon as I got the test results through, then we were all cool and everybody else had been tested. So I've managed to start seeing people by doing that. Is it a hundred? No, but no. it's, it's like, you know, if you're going to date somebody and you an STD want- test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. If you want to yeah. like stop using you know, condoms, then you both go get tested. It's like, okay, we can take them off. Well, I, may, I missed out on all of that stuff. I just went for dinner in Malibu at sunset. Huh? Because you can. Oh, right. Okay. So were you inside or outside? I don't I mean, want to go inside yet. I, I, I want to stay outside. I agree with yeah, you. Outside, yeah. See, I think, I mean, I'm fine. I Before COVID, I prefer to eat outside. I don't know why. I, as long as they have heat lamps, because I get cold. As, right. if, as long as they have heat lamps, I'd rather eat al fresco. Me too. Me too. In a restaurant. And I don't care where it is. So, I'm not, and so I'm not like worried to eat inside. I just would always prefer that my, my thing is not going to change. As long as they have an outside dining, I'm going to choose that. But I mean, you know, how do I feel? I mean, you know, I guess I did not do it for me. I probably would wow. have not gotten the vaccine for a while to see how it's testing with other people. Oh, wow. Um, I probably wouldn't have because I've never been vaccinated for the flu or pneumonia. Never, 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 never. Wow. So, and it's not that I'm an anti-vaxxer. I just haven't done it. Never felt the need. I did it this time because my, my, everybody that lives in my household, my roommate, you know, she got her double and she's older than 65. My mother 
obviously as a compromise system. And she, so I thought it was the right thing to do. That's, you know, and I don't regret it. I mean, the first time I had a little bit of a headache and my arm hurt the second time, um, I was exhausted. I mean, like I took a nap like for an hour. I know that's not a lot, but like my arm hurt like a SOB the second time. It really hurt more the second time. And I fell asleep for an hour. I never take a nap. I took yeah. a nap. It just I love naps. Never took a nap. I, I, and I get my shot every year too, Gam, because I'm a diabetic. So that your symptoms are about right that you're experiencing. Yeah. And you don't forget, I used to be in the military. So I've had tons of vaccines, I mean, shots. And some, some of them just knock you out. So, you know, I applaud you because you're not a person that usually gets a shot. Because I've heard a lot of whiny crybabies. I don't want to get the second shot. It's going to make me sick. And it's like, well, do you want to be sick for a few days or a week? Or would you rather be on a ventilator in a coma? Right. Right. You right. Know, it's right. your decision. Right. And I didn't feel a thing. I was fine. And my second one's April 4th. And I'm not dreading it. It's like, okay, if I'm knocked out, for, I'll, I'll be yeah. like, gay and I'll take a nap. I mean, really, I got my shot because of my husband. I'm, I'm being more responsible for them. I wasn't, I was never afraid of getting sick. I thought, well, okay. You can still be a carrier if you have the shot. It doesn't mean that you can't pass it on. Yeah. That doesn't have anything to do with it. Just, that just means what, like what Gann said is you yeah. get a less of, a, of an effect yeah. of COVID, you know, because five out of every 100 people who have both vaccines will get COVID. Because yeah. I just yeah, posted I an article about sick. that. I thought, well, it'll be inconvenient. I don't mind being sick because I know I'm healthy enough. I'll come out of it. Okay. It's, I didn't want to carry it. That's right. You can carry it though. You can be a carrier. If you, yeah. if you've had both but, of your vaccines, you can carry it and give it to anybody else. That's why it's like, they, it's like wearing seat belts. We wear seat belts and we make people in our cars wear seat belts. Right. If not only to save our own lives, but so that we aren't ejected out of the car through the windshield of somebody else's car and kill them. And is a seat belt going to save you from getting in an accident? No, no, nope. but could it save your life? Yeah. Hell yeah and airbags too. That's All a good analogy. Things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, are you going to, well, you, some of you have to, cause you're performers, you have to go in person, but are you guys going back to the offices or back to where you work? My girlfriends who were office workers, they're saying they don't need to. They've set up their offices, they're good, they're productive, and they have even more time to run the, uh, you know, run the errands, be with their kids. And it's like, they're telling the HR people, it's like, no, cause some people, they're being called back in two or three times a week and they're going, we don't need to maybe two or three times a month to be sociable. What are your friends up to? Or what are you guys up to? Are you going to no. go back? Or are you going to my home? job? I mean, I, I work obviously at a corporation. Um, I find it very difficult to work from home. Um, I'd be probably because of the ADHD. Okay. I can't, I, I'm like, there's so much going on because I do have a mother. I do. Yeah, there's stuff going on. So I, when I go to the office, it's sort of in my head, it's like, I'm able to compartmentalize and do office and here, I mean, I've gotten better at it. Like in the beginning, I was completely flustered and couldn't figure the shit out. I was like, ah, oh, hyperventilating because I, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah. um, but but the reality is, I mean, you know, every cor a lot of corporations um, are talking about like a hybrid format where yeah. you go in, you know, three times a week. And I am so looking forward to that. Um, and I think there, I think a lot of companies are saying initially it's going to be voluntary you know, voluntary to go really? into the office. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we may, you know, sift into, you know, um, you know, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or the Tuesday, Thursday, or whatever it is. I'm happy to do that. You know, although I have to say because of my job and I'm on set and I've got photo shoots, I've never been precluded from going to the office if I needed to go to the office, as long as I was tested. And God knows I get tested a million times a week. Yeah. As long as I'm tested, you know, I'm allowed to go into the office because I forgot something or I, I, or my computer's faster at the office. So I need, I, I'd rather just do that there. So I kind of have been doing in a way that hybrid, you know, like going in when necessary. I actually like that to go in when I want to, not because I have to. That's it. Yeah. Nice. That's what a lot of people I've been hearing. They, they don't, like you said, they don't want to go back into the office. And a lot of the corporations are finding out it's a lot cheaper to have the people work from home. What is yeah. it? Well, that? I do. I want to go back to the office because my oh. office is a stage. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, and, goodness. And I will say the main reason I, I got vaccinated is because I'm I'm desperately trying to rent my apartment here. Uh, I have had so much trouble during this pandemic getting somebody in here. 
Uh, and in fact, if anybody knows of somebody looking for a really nice two bedroom apartment that I only come back to one month out of the year and the rest of the time they have it all to themselves in prime West Hollywood rent control, send them my way. But um, mm. I got my vaccine because I've heard that a lot of the airlines are floating the idea of having people have vaccination cards yes. in order to be able to travel internationally. And I don't want to be like ready to get out of here and right. then not be able to fly. So but you give you a card. FYI, when you get the vaccines, they yeah. give you a card. Yeah. I yeah, know. Supposed I to carry around. Oh, okay. So yeah. I, mean, I think we've all been vaccinated, all of us, right? What? Everybody no, here no, tonight no, has been no, vaccinated, no, right? No, no. One no, time. Mine's, my second's coming up. Yeah, but we all had our first, right? Yeah. No. Oh, well, I'm pretty happy to hear that almost a lot of the people that I do know are getting their first shot. So it is making its way to us, you know, getting more and more shots to where more people are having it. And then we've got to get to herd mentality, basically. Yeah. yeah. I think so. <laughs> well, I, one thing I have to say, I went to Cal State LA to get my shots and I did a drive through for both my mom. I mean, I was there twice in a week because I couldn't get my mother and my appointment. Graduated yeah. from there. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah. Um, Cal State, sorry, Cal State LA. Sorry, Cal yeah. State LA. Oh, yeah. okay. I got my degree in political science from there. Ah, okay. So I have to say, we did the, the drive-through, and you know, it's a FEMA site, and the army was there. Mm -hmm. uh, they were there, sort of. They're the ones who were giving the injections, and I have to say, you know, it was so well done and well thought about and well organized. And I mean, like I got there, and they were so lovely, and, and it's like. You know, I kept, I, like, I, I remember keep saying, thank you for your service. Just thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. And, you know, and it's like, nobody was thanking them, you know, and it just bothered me because, and I was like, I, I, I want to just say, thank you. Thank you for everyone that in the military doing whatever you guys are doing. I have a friend, um, Dealey, she is a physician and I guess she's not on active duty, but they took her. They, I guess they, I don't know the terminology, but she was not in active duty, but they brought her back. She's on reserve. She's a reserve. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the term. Vicky may know, but that's, they a, that's what it is. Okay. So they brought her back to deal with stuff like this with COVID. And I have to say, you know, I just want to thank everyone. You too, Vicky, of course, because you're oh, part of us, but thank you. thank you everyone, you know, boots on the ground now doing what you can do for your service. Um, you know, everything else you've done, not in this country, you know, that that's every single one of you should get a medal of honor um, for everything that you've done. But I also think that what you're doing, and, and I think the military, quite frankly, is the best, um, the yes. best group to sort of put, get this shit together and get it done right. So thank you, everyone in the military. Good for that. My, the health my mom was a nurse and my dad was a doctor and, and they've since passed, but Man, when you think of all these people, the 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 front line, they're gonna have PTSD. I mean, they've been dealing yeah. with a lot of crap. So we gotta thank them too. When I see doctors and nurses leaving leaving their shifts, their sixteen hour shifts, I feel like going, "Thank you for your service." Right, all the healthcare workers. But they are. Yeah. I mean, really, everyone that you know, they're on the front line. Everybody that's on the front line. Just yeah. on the tragedy that they've seen too, you know, when you hear these stories, it's heartbreaking that's, that, that was you know, the they go into work and then, you know, people are just dying and dying and dying. And then, like you said, there's anti-vaxxers out there. There's people who don't want to wear their masks. There's people who still don't believe in it. It's funny that Donald Trump said, hey, don't be worried about COVID, but yet he went and got his vaccine in January. Mm -hmm. It's like, why don't you tell all your idiot followers that you got your vaccine so that they could go get theirs too, that it's real and you should be afraid of it. I mean, like what, almost 600... <laughs> What are we at right now? Almost 600,000 people have died of this yeah. thing? Yeah. It's insane. Have, yeah, each, I have one a friend you, have each one of you traveled this well, year? I have not no. yet. Nope. No. I have, well, I, I flew up to Sacramento. When was that? God, it was about a, was it a, a little over, maybe six months ago? Year ago? When did I come? Like six I? months ago, I think. Yeah. 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 And because there was like no, hardly anybody on the plane. I wore a mask the whole time. I haven't uh, traveled yet, and I'm traveling to Texas of all places. But oh, thank yeah. God we'll have our shots by then, May 24th. We postponed it twice during this year, and we're going to Houston, we're going to Dallas. And I asked my friend, "How's the situation in Dallas?" She's like, "Oh, it's been horrible for a year. I haven't wanted to be here. Nobody wears masks. Nobody believes in it." But by then, everybody <coughs> will be starting to get. It. A lot of people in Texas are not getting vaccinated. Oh, they're not because it. Well, look, it's Texas. I mean, right. I was going to go out of town the first. 
I was going to go out of town actually this week. I was going to go Tuesday through Friday to, with a, a whole bunch, a couple of my friends were there on a house in Vegas. I was going to go and I was not going to drive. I was going to fly. But then, I mean, I didn't go because of the cat, but I really, I had booked my ticket. So I didn't go. I mean, I have a trip scheduled possibly um, to go in July to Sedona. Oh, and then beautiful. I just booked a trip to Thailand. Wow. Uh, for 2022, we're going to be frolicking with the elephants. Oh. It's a place called Bamboo Travel. And it's oh. two weeks. It's two weeks. Nice. And, and you do fun stuff, but you actually like go to like the elephant compound and you like shovel shit and feed them. <laughs> and then you go to these towns. It's kind of like Habitat for Humanity in a way, you know, but mixed with some fun. So I just booked it. I mean, I did get insurance for other reasons besides, you of know, course. I'm afraid just in case, God forbid, something with mom. But, um, and it's nothing that I've ever wanted to do. I've never wanted to go to Thailand, but that trip sounds so amazing. I, I want to go, go to Thailand. To huh? I thought you were going to say I never wanted to shovel shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> trust me, I shovel shit daily, but um, <laughs> metaphorically and you know truly. But it's I, not I, like picking a cat scoop up and getting your cat crap out of no, the cat I box. I can't <laughs> wait. I, I mean, the thing I first said is, oh shit, I got I can't have nails. I've got to cut that down because this is a work <laughs> trip. And um, so I did that. I mean, I do want, you know, like I said, I don't know with last time I had two, two of my, my cousins pass away a couple of weeks ago in Italy from COVID, um, you know, a mother and a daughter, you know, she was 88, under, not understandable, but you know, it's, she's older, but her daughter died like a month before yeah. um, and she was only 60 and uh, COVID affected her liver and she didn't have any problems and wow. affected her liver, gone. And then her, her, but and her husband had it, but he recovered and he's home. And her mom, Rena, was in the hospital and sort of like coming on the good way, like like coming over the hump. But then she did have heart disease and, and she had a heart attack. So oh wow. So wow. the thing is, you know, COVID. Yes, you could talk about COVID, the symptoms, but once it gets in your system, That's you know, it. it can affect other pre-existing conditions. You right. Know? I've heard. Yeah. Did you hear about that little boy? He's like six years old. He had both of his hands and his feet amputated. Yep. He's six. He didn't even uh, have diabetes. He doesn't have heart problems. He doesn't have liver problems. He's a little healthy boy. And there was a man down in San Clemente where my mom lives. The same thing happened to him. He had to have both of his hands amputated. So it affects uh, everybody differently. You know, it's not yeah. just people are like, oh, like my uh, Kim's nephew said, oh, only the old fogies are dying. I said, that's not true. I said, because, you, you know, sometimes the side effects are worse than death. I mean, dying yeah. is the oh, best maybe. thing that could happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. We have a caller. I want to just cut, cut, cut everybody off for a second because we do have a caller. I'd like to All take right. a caller. Hello. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Um, who's calling? Uh, hi, my name is Diana Powers. Hi, Diana. Hi, hi Diana. Hi. Hey, Diana. Hi, Vicki. <laughs> Hi, girls. How are you doing? I'm doing good. All right. <laughs> now, this is hey, a lady I, who, who oh, she, she lives oh, up in Seattle okay. and going to give a good shout out to her, you know, because she's uh, battling cancer right now. And I want to just tell you that we all sending you lots of love. Absolutely. Thank lots you. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Thank you. you. Yeah. yeah I was, Seattle I, right now. Oh, right now. Well, rain. Uh, shocking, shocking, <laughs> priceless, unbelievable. So, what, what, yeah. so, you have some, so what, how was everything with you, Diana? What do you have questions? Do you want to add to the convo? Yeah, well, I was just, I was just going to give my two cents on the COVID shots and yeah. and the uh, anti-vaxxers and and deniers of the COVID period. <laughs> and um, well, like okay, like Vicky said, I'm I'm uh, I just have I have I just just diagnosed with breast cancer in the middle of of um of the summer last year in the middle of covid and so uh, i've had since i've had two surgeries and i've had a double mastectomy on january 6th this year on the january fateful day of january 6th <laughs> and um anyways uh uh now i just started i'm now a month into my chemo and um i get uh, i i come from a, a very conservative family um and they're all trump voters and whatever not and so they don't believe in the the covid <laughs> and uh 
and they don't believe in wearing masks and they don't believe in the shots. They're not taking the shots. And I've, I've already been obviously uh, had my two shots already because of, I had to have them before I started chemo. And um, so I, I was on the phone with my mom and I was like, why aren't we this morning? And I said, why aren't uh, my, my, one of my brothers is sick and one of my um, uh, in-laws, one of the sister-in-laws is sick. And I said, is it COVID? Because it sounds like COVID. And um, they're like, well, did they get tested? Well, no, they're not going to do that. What? They're just going to write it out. And I'm what? like, oh, why don't they get tested? And I said, one of them's going to be supposed to be going to Hawaii in two weeks. And I said, you realize they're going to get tested before they fly. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that something that you really have to do now? Don't you have, have to be yes, tested? Yes, you have Hawaii, to. you have to Hawaii. be tested. To anyone. Yeah. 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 And, and I said, I said, that doesn't make sense that they, because she's going to get there and she's going to test probably, maybe, what if she tests positive? Then she can't go on a trip that they've been planning forever. Right. You know? that's, that's true, but I, thinking. She's going to, yeah. And then I said, oh. and they won't wear masks. They won't wear masks because it, they make it completely political. And it's wow. like, this is no political issue. I just like, and I said, so I said, think of it this way. I said, I said, you know how um, our, one of my nephews uh, had leukemia, and he just got over leukemia two years ago, 21 years old. And I said, you know how we had to wear masks around him for just so while he was wearing chemo or while he was going through chemo, and we had to really, you know, wash our hands and do all that stuff, and we couldn't actually hug him. So I said, it's exactly the same thing. And so it's exactly the same thing with me. I said, don't you, if you're not going to do it for yourself, can't you do it for me? And they're like, that's just silly. Um, you're not going to get sick. And I'm like, but you members? can't. You said that to your family you members who won't wear masks? Yes. Oh, wow. Even yeah. when they come around you, they'll, um, they'll come in your presence and they won't put a mask on knowing that you're going through chemo? No. Wow. Well, that, and this is what I said. I told him, I said, well, I, and I haven't, I haven't seen him in probably... Oh my gosh! Since I've been diagnosed, so that was by like eight, nine months, eight months ago, that I was diagnosed, and um, or, or nine months ago maybe, and I haven't seen them. And I just, I just moved up here from California, and I've been wanting to see them, but then COVID happened, mm-hmm. and so I, I haven't been able to go see them. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, and that's so very I selfish said, well, of them. That's exactly, Vicki. That's what I said. I said, you know what? This sounds like, I said, this is selfish talk right now. And how do you figure? And I said, because you know how that makes me feel? I said, I said, I want to desperately see my parents. I want to see my siblings. I said, I desperately want to see you guys. It's just, just for the support and, and the, the, like, you know, you got this Diana, you know, not, you know, I, 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 I don't, necessarily need it that much but i it just feels good to know that your family has your back you know and they they were like well we're not gonna wear and i said well you know what that makes me feel like you don't you would rather not wear a mask and and because of political reasons than see your own daughter just to give me a hug or even just say hey across the room to me see me live you know i said that you meet you're being selfish that you love not where you're making your statement rather than seeing your own daughter or your sister, you know, it's completely selfish and they won't get the shot because they're just going to write it out. If I'm sick, I'm sick. Well, the thing is, unfortunately, this isn't just a writing out. It's not something that's going to go away. This may be a vaccine that will continue to be offered annually and as and and oh, you know, that, just like the flu shot exactly you know? and as i said earlier and i don't know if you were listening i mean i've read that because of the the mute the, they it quickly mutates there's many strains that even though we have the two shots we'll probably have to get booster shots right A booster so, right you know, right i heard so, you say that you know i don't understand i you know look i don't i will never because i am not a trumpist i am not i just don't understand it and I am not, I'm mm-hmm. honest God, I don't want to waste, I'm just unfortunate with your situation. I mean, that's family and that hurts. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I just, I'm tired of explaining to people right. yeah. who are deaf ears and I don't wish them harm. I no. don't, 
I hope they skate That's true. through this without any COVID anything. Um, but the likelihood exactly. probably not. But it's I've learned that it's, you know, I agree to disagree. I will not waste my time. Um, I just can't convince people. You know, like I said earlier, right. I am not an anti-vaxxer. I just never found the importance of vaccine. And I've been fortunate, you know, I've been yeah. fortunate not uh -huh. to have gotten the flu and not to have gotten pneumonia. So, you know, yeah, you can go with that false sense of, hey, I haven't done it, but it doesn't mean I'm never going to get it. But on the flip right. side, you know, I'm in pretty good health. So a flu will not kill me. Pneumonia will not kill me. Right. Oh, and right. Well, kill me. I don't know that. You know, you can. Right. Oh, but, you know, but high, uh, a high risk person like myself, that a flu can kill me. Absolutely. You know? hey, Diana, it's like my, um, doctor, it's like yeah. my mother's doctor used to tell me when she moved in with me because she's comp highly compromised. He said, you should get a flu shot. You live in the same house. And I remember right. she got the flu shot one year and like not that long, she was in the hospital with the flu and pneumonia and she had both shots and I'm oh. saying to him and she's almost dying. I'm like, well, what the fuck did that do? Nothing. <laughs> and he said, right. I mean, she just <laughs> got it. I mean, what the fuck, man? What's this? And he said, <laughs> it's not, again, it is not immune. But if your mother did not have those shots, she'd be dead right now. Plain and simple. All right. Right, exactly. You know, and the flu oh, shot only lot. the flu shot that you get only protects against the most dangerous flu of that year. So well, we have about you know, exactly. a thousand okay. different flus every single year, mm -hmm. different strains of it, and you're supposed to get it. You know, as a diabetic, and you know, I go to the VA, the veterans, they make me get a flu shot every year, and they tell me the same thing. There's a thousand different types of flu. We're going to protect you against the most dangerous one. So, like your mom, you know, with your mom, right. God, she didn't die. Right. Hey, Diane, what um support yes. system do you have because it's awful it it, uh, it sucks that your parents are just so set on this yeah i have and that's on I them, have not two, you, uh, two really really wonderful children and i live with my daughter and her fiance and they're they're both their partners are excellent one's a doctor okay. excuse me so um it really works out it, it all worked out really well as far as that goes. And I have an uncle and an aunt that used to be nurses. They're retired nurses that they help me. They take me everywhere and take me to my chemos and this and that. And, and my kids. Um, yeah, do reach out to your friends. So I have, I, have a, I have a lot of good system on this side of the mountain. All the, the other side of the mountain is where they all live. <laughs> so and, you know you know, they're about and two and hours away. probably better see. off that they're on the other side of the mountain. But you know what you need to tell them? You need to tell yeah. them that tell them viruses don't fucking vote. That's okay? right. They don't care right. what exactly. are. <laughs> well, it's Oh a, my gosh. Well, you know, exactly. they, I, but I just I just yeah, I just uh, I just I just told him I said, Well, I guess I won't be able to see you for a while then. <laughs> And it's and, and I didn't even get like a oh no we'll figure something out I gotta like okay but you know what Diana <laughs> you've got a really good family you've got already a support team those people matter oh yeah the ones there and that's where I you know you yeah. concentrate you know your stuff with I mean you know whatever happens to them and I know if it's a family member parents or whatever it's tough but you can't you can lead the horse to water but you can't make them drink right. and drink. and the reality is if they drank the Kool Aid that's where they're at. So I would not waste your oh, yeah. energy considering in the, you're, you're in the situation that you're in. I would not in spiritually, I would to ask you not to waste your energy on that negativity, focus yeah. on the positivity, your health, your healing, and the people around you that are giving your positive vibration. That's what you need to feel yeah. and not deal with that. Yeah. I that really have a positive outlook on myself, on my whole, my whole self of uh, the, everything I'm going through. I, 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 I had a pity party at the very beginning, and then now I just, because I thought, you know, if I'm going to sit here and, and cry and, and get upset and say, why, why me? Where am I, what's that going to do for me? It's not going to do me any good, you know, and, and, and you do have a really room. good outlook on it because I, I, I've never met Diana in person, but she's a really good Facebook friend and followed all my, you know, when I was doing the seven o'clock stories and everything. And Diana, you have a great outlook because when she had her mastectomy, she had a funny conversation between another one of my Facebook friends and called it her foob, her fake boob, an F-O-O-B. 
that, she's like, oh, what if my food <laughs> fell out? And I was like, oh my God, it's so great that you can actually joke about this. And like you said, move on from that. Well, yeah, well, I mean, well, you they, have to, you have to joke, <laughs> you well, know. Diana, I, I want to thank you for calling in, sh you know, thank share you. your story, um, you know, being vulnerable and open and honest. And um, yeah. we all wish you, you know, beautiful blessings and health always. Thank you. And, um, you know, I, I, I look forward to, you can friend me on Facebook because I'd love to follow your journey. So thank you. Awesome. All right. No problem. And um, I just want to say uh, uh, thanks, Vicki, for all your support. I really appreciate it. No problem. Definitely. Anytime. I love you, girl. Okay. All right. Have okay. Love you, too. Night. Thank you. Okay. Night thanks, night. ladies. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. I think, you know, Bye. like with COVID, you know, we hear about the death, the dying, the devastation. And, you know, it's so wonderful to me that you can off balance it by such some positive stories and inspirational stories and, and things that people are going through. I mean, because I think, you know, with such, such, such dark clouds, it's so lovely to have, you know, to see the balance of positivity and light and, and, and really inspiration and hope. And I think, you know, with Biden- well, talented journalism. Right, but I mean, like with Biden in, I mean, I felt a whole big cloud lifting, you know what I mean? Oh. <clears throat> and I think, you know, I think we all, and I'm not saying, look, I'm not, I can't say I hate Trumpists. I don't know them. I don't know them to hate them. I disagree with them. I think they're misguided. But then I look on the other side, they say, they're saying the same thing about us. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's it's strange but true. It's a divided <laughs> country. It is, a, but you know what? And then hopefully, you know, we're getting closer to not be divided. You know, I think you know one would think that the pandemic. Mm, I don't think so, brought, Dan. I don't think we're going to come back from that. To be honest. No, I know, but you would think. You would think in a in a. You would in think a, a logical, and I think I know things are illogical in a logical way. Here's this pandemic. You know, it's something that's universal. They don't care. Like Durga said, viruses don't vote. You know, you got to listen to what she said, because I have still kept a few friends that vote for Trump on my Facebook just because I went to high school with them or did comedy with them or whatever. And they are extremely adamant and defiant. They don't believe in it. They still believe the election was stolen. Yep. I have a girl I knew from comedy 20 years ago. Every day she posts how the election was stolen. Biden's a fraud. That Harris, They're just setting him up to, to knock him over so they can make Harris the president. That, you know, everything. They hate us still. They're still calling us, li thanks, libtards. The price of gas went up and they blamed us. It's like, <laughs> Yeah, Ridiculous. libtards. I know that's what they call us, libtards. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna call me a libtard? Well, you're a Republican. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't and know what you're a Republican. Really Sorry. Cool. That Cindy, whatever her name is, that ridiculous attorney just came up and basically said, "Well, you know, actually, nobody in their right mind would believe what I was saying." You know, she and did say that. Yeah, Cindy <laughs> Powell. So many excuses. It's like, what is it gonna take? It drives me. Crazy. I mean, who's going to believe a guy that has oil running down his face? <laughs> See, here's somebody something. was telling me that Biden had so somebody was saying that Biden had softball questions. So I'm like, no, he didn't. He just answered in a nice way and didn't insult reporters and right. didn't turn and go next. The and best so part was, was shut up, was, man. It was a little boring, and I like that. Oh my God, it's so nice to have boys yes. uh, in the White House. Such a relief. So nice. But so here's, here's the thing people who don't believe in it, Okay, so let's until let's they get it, Durga. Other, until they get it. Wait, wait let's then. apply this to other scientific precepts, okay? Let's say, okay, let's go from I don't believe in COVID to I don't believe in gravity. So next time you're on an airplane, open the door and step the fuck out. See what happens. Science doesn't care about what they believe. Go on a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> but to shift They're from science it. back to body, body science. Um, <laughs> so, Ronnie, I mean, you know, based on, you know, your whole series and stuff, I mean, what highlights do you want to impart to our re, uh, to our listeners and viewers about sort of how did the body is the temple? How does one take care of the body as the temple? Okay, I'll just three things. Every diet on the face of the earth works if you do it. The problem with diets is people just think it's a punishment. Oh my God, no. So 
<laughs> find the right way for the rest of your life. Find what you, it fits into your lifestyle. I will never give up um, dairy. I love cheese. I live with cheese. I eat ice cream. And so people always ask me, how do you stay in such great shape? I'm like, because they see me eat. And I'm like, well, I eat. I don't overeat. You know what I mean? I don't overeat. Our body is all we have. Skin, tissue, cell, DNA. Take care of it, for God's sake. You take care of your loved ones. You take care of your kids. Gay and you take care of your mother. Everybody takes care of everybody else. Why not take care of yourself? Mm-hmm. Take care of this body because it's all we've got. And, and if I gave up chocolate, I, I wouldn't be able to take care of myself. I'd be beside myself. And it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean going crazy. Find what works for you. And that's why I've been turning into a fitness coach because I've been helping women more emotionally. It's, it, it's emotional. People think they don't have time to work out. Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Winston Churchill, Martin Luther King Jr., you know, Michelle Obama. What do they all have in common? They all have 24 hours in the day. So do we all, okay? You <laughs> can't find time to work out. You have 20 minutes in your freaking day to work out. If you have time to go on Facebook, work out. You want to listen to a podcast? Work out. I can listen to Gay Ann at least four times mm-hmm. while working out on a Friday night. Yeah. You can find time. We live in LA. Go to the canyons. My God, we live in Southern California. Go out. Sacramento. You know, when I lived in Paris, I used to go walk the streets of Paris. There's an app called Lolo that has a, a, a workout that's designed to fit into seven minutes. Yeah. It's designed to rev up your uh, metabolism and whatever your heart rate enough so that you keep burning fat throughout several the hit. hours. H-I-I-T, H-I-I-T, the hit. If you can do hit. So the mm-hmm. best thing is to find out what works for you, what really works for you. I help women find time. And every morning, and this is my, my, my last tip, every morning without fail. I know some people get up and they meditate, some people journal. I've just never been that woo-woo. I think it's great. I get up and I start, when this whole thing started last March, I could barely do 20 push-ups and I thought I was a badass. Every day I added one or two push-ups. I'm now up to 108 push-ups in the morning and I don't have any more time. What? Wow. Wow. On my toes, military woman. On my toes and my hands. 120 push-ups and I do 150 jumps. Maybe some abs. I never go past four minutes in the morning. That's my zen. Every morning, you, I can do like one push up in four minutes. <laughs> before you feed the cat, before you check your email, before you do anything, do something physical every morning before you even brush your teeth because you know you have to. And then your mind starts getting used to it. Like, oh, this mm-hmm. is normal. This mm-hmm. is normal. That's it. That's that's that's, that's what you feel. It's like well, I go on my walk every single day. That's the first thing I do when I get up, you know, because I have to take my diabetes pills and I have to wait 30 minutes before I eat. So I have a dog. I take my dog on a walk every single day, the first thing, no matter what. And that's how I do it. I don't do push ups, but you know. Find no, something nice. that works for you. I'm and about this- to do something physical right now because I got a date. So oh, that's right. right. Oh. Let's hope you're real you know, physical. Dancing, that's what you're talking about, right? Uh huh. Are you uh, going out for dinner? Do you know? I'm cooking dinner. Oh, lovely. what you cooking? He's been tested as well. He sent me his negative test. Mm. So, oh, good. Yeah. I have a date too with my wife. We're gonna have ahi tuna for dinner. Ooh, well, that's nice. Good. I, I might make English English chips. Would you like? What's that? Chips? What is that? I fancy that I, egg and chips, potatoes. Yeah. Oh, that's it. I like yeah. that's all you're having. Yeah, I'm, I'm making I'm making English. um salmon with lemon cream sauce, mm. uh, cauliflower oh. rice, and uh, probably a green salad. Are you going to use capers in the cream sauce? No, she's I'm not good, going that far. That's a good idea. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a good cook. I'm a wonderful cook. Um, <laughs> so and so it's funny. A lot of my friends, they'll be sitting there going, "God, I need to. I, I'm having someone over for dinner or whatever," and they'll call me. I said, what do you have in your refrigerator? Okay, yeah. do this. Mm-hmm. And they're like, because uh, uh, I just love to cook. I mean, in another life, I will be a chef. I mean, everyone says to me, why another life? You still life? have time, do it now. I know, but I still love what I do. I still love my job. I, it's like, I still love what I do. So I cook for my friends. Like I, there's a one friend of mine, I'm like, hey, she goes shopping. And she's called me because I bought scallops. I bought this, I bought that. I'm like, okay, yep, coming over. We're cooking. We're cooking. <laughs> oh, yum. Nice. And I can't wait to get back to that. That's the that's the post-COVID life I want. Come on over and cook with friends. Yeah. Have a good time. Everybody yeah. get together. But, you know, right now, like you said, stay outside, do it outside. Yep. yep. Well, ladies, 
It's um, is it an hour yet? It's it's an hour. Hour. It's it's Durga's got a date, girl. Yeah, I go. No, she's <laughs> cooking. Well, everyone, um, thank you for thank you for coming in tonight, R Ronnie. Thanks for popping in. Um, I hope you can be part of this again. I thank just want to thank you. all of you listeners for and viewers. Um, this show will be up on YouTube tonight or tomorrow, probably tomorrow. Um, if you want to watch the video, if you want to just hear the audio, it'll be on Spotify, Amazon, all of the different aggregators. Um, I just want to always thank you for supporting me. Thanks for supporting me throughout my whole life because. I keep nothing secret. It's all I, I vomited out on Facebook and I appreciate all of you being there and being supportive. Um, so thank you from the, really the bottom of my heart. Um, and, you know, again, we'll be on next week. So we are a little off, but we're still on the first and third Friday of every month. So April 2nd, we will be back and um, 7 to 7 to 8 30 PM Pacific here on the United Broadcasting Network. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what guests. I have no idea. And these girls can tell you. It's just whatever. We have free no for fun. all. It's a free for all. It's always a free for all. Um, but you know, I do want you to continue to call in. Um, sometimes I know you guys say, but listen, it's so interesting, and we don't want to call in. No, I want you to call in. You're part of, you know, we're just the girls, and you're part of the girls. And if you're a guy, you can call in. If you're, I don't care who you are, it matters. You know, pull up a chair. Join, be part of our conversation. We want to hear everything. Even we if call we gay in and friends. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Even if we, we don't just we don't agree, it doesn't matter. Don't come and try and convince us, but <clears throat> welcome to put your form out here. We're here. But again, um, please everybody take care of yourselves. It's really important. It starts from within and, you know, set that example. Hold on. I see a chat. Hold on. Tell me we have a caller. We gotta what? go. We got another caller. All right, let's do. You want to take this caller? Yeah. Go All wait, right, wait. let's go for it. Leave, yep. Last let's... call of the day, and then we'll totally sign off. Hello, hello. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Who's calling? Are they still there, Christian? It says they're still on the line. Can you hello? talk? Hello, hello. Maybe their phone's on mute. Is their phone on mute? Ask them. Is your phone on mute? We can't hear you. Okay, we will be hanging up on you, and please, it's not rude, but Durga's got a date. Um, <laughs> yeah, blame it on me. <laughs> so everybody, please be safe, be well, love, empathy, compassion. I mean, all those good things. It's not full of shit. It's not woo-woo. You know, start with that. You know, always start. You know, but if you don't have those qualities, it's because there could be something lacking in yourself. So you always have to start with learning to love yourself first. Love yourself first. And from there, you will have the capacity. I love and myself first every night. And <laughs> Me too. And so I just want to say thank you for joining us. QTE Brad on Instagram. QTE Brad on Instagram. Between the Sheets Facebook page. Between the Sheets um, with Gay and Bruno on YouTube. So thank you so much. We'll see you next week, April 2nd. And uh, Cara, sign off, and then we'll just go around the room. Yeah, cheerio. I'm going to work on my mosaic this week. I have my first commission. It's a bird bath. Well, Yay! bird bath. Woo! Uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing a session next week, and uh, I'm going to be having my day tonight. If you want to hear the music that I've done, like Black Floyd with my sister Lorelai, the McBroom sisters, uh, go to the McBroom sisters on Facebook or Durga McBroom, either my personal or my fan page. And my Twitter handle is at Mrs. Durga McBroom and Instagram is Durga Diva. Thank you. Vicki. Just follow me on Facebook for all my rants, raves, reviews, complaints. You know how it is. Just putting it out there. And thanks for, and Diana, thank you so much for calling. We loved having you. And Gan, thanks for having me back on the show again. You're welcome. And Ronnie, give, where can people find you? Hey, Ronnie fitness i'm hey ronnie fitness coach on facebook all my stuff is there hey ronnie fitness coach ronnie low ronnie loa on twitter and uh, i follow gan so you'll find me there but really do something for yourself every day your body because if you love your body everybody else will love your body and your mind and your soul just connect with yourself and connect with everybody else thank you so much for having me gan and I'm welcome ronnie. we will do this Great again time. thank you christian yeah. who's working the cameras and stuff in the studio um you know i keep saying this you know I, you know, maybe not the first week in April, but I'll be vaccinated twice. I, I'm thinking I want to go back in the studio. I, I do. I think even just do a test show, like the third 
Friday in April just to see. But um, and you're all welcome. Um, six feet distancing and no masks because you know we just got to kind of configure it properly because I can't wear a mask because I can't hear shit. And so everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, ladies, for being this amazing support team, support group. You're my family, you're my friends, but more importantly, you're my family. So thank you for joining. Have a great weekend, everybody. And we will see you next week, April 2nd. As always, namaste. Cue the music, Christian. Mm -hmm.